Here we are then, day three on my beautiful, beautiful Harley. It's got to be said, she's really, really going on me. I mean, look at it. That's just spectacular. It is, as I say, it's just a change of mindset for me, having been a bike racer and always going for speed and bikes are pushed to the limit. It's so nice to get on a bike like this that it's just designed to kind of cruise along, be cool, relax on, and still have that kind of raw, easy rider style image. I mean, look at it. It is, as I say, pretty much close to a chopper with those handlebars, the way it's been set up with the front forks and the back. It looks beautiful. It's comfy to ride. It's a Harley, so yeah, it's a V-twin. It rattles a little bit, you know, it's got that slightly almost um, visceral feel to it, which is what Harleys are all about. I've made it all dirty though, look, it's terrible. But one thing to be said for this is, it is beautiful to ride. I mean, honestly, it is if you're looking at cruising nice distances. What I'm going to do to it today is take it up to the town of Snowdome, so it's a good kind of 40, 45 minute journey there and then back. Uh, I'm just going to cruise along some A roads, B roads, maybe even give it a little spin on the motorway, see how it does there. It's just started raining, so we're going to find out exactly what it's like there. And it's, it's my last day on it, to be honest with you, before they come pick it up on Monday. Uh, I'm going to be going on to the Gladius and the V King and the Rocket 3 after this. So I want to enjoy it because I haven't had much of a chance to ride this in the sun, which is a real shame because that's what Harley's all about. Did earlier in the week and that was lush. Uh, it's just going to be nice to get on it hit that road, cruise, have the sun from the exhaust, and just uh, feel the wind in my long, stupidly greasy hair. Um, what can I say about this bike then, really? Okay, price-wise, as I say, the two-tone effect is obviously about 11 grand. Um, it's a little bit cheaper if you just have different paint jobs, about 500 quid less. Uh, it has got the very cool keyless ignition, which we've already talked about, which is really simple. So I want to get it now. I've got the key in my pocket. Turn it on. I've got two mother's brothers. I've talked about the sound before. It's not exactly the throat here, but it's actually really nice if you got on it. It's warmed up, obviously, uh, for a bit. The big thing is, get some screaming eels, get some aftermarket cans on that, and this suddenly goes from, like, a, you know, uh, obviously nice-sounding machine that has to be done for all the MOT and the limits to being a snarly beast. You get some good exhaust on it. That 1596 V-twin engine uh, produces, you know, power in a good Harley way. It's probably one of the better Harleys I've ever parked with you, I've that I've had for power. But it is a very different type of power than, for instance, the Japanese bikes. But if you compare it to like the Intruder, then yeah, you, you know the kind of where it's coming from. But it's, it's not, you know, designed to be ridden on the track. It's not designed to be ridden hard. It is designed to just be cruising around, provide you with that kind of nice power through the range. Um, I thought it'd be a lot harder to ride than it was for the seat with the kind of chopper style handles and ports and stuff. Um, but it's not bad. As long as you line up the corners, it's not something you're going to duck in, obviously. And with the uh, pegs on there, you are going to scrape on the roundabout if you get it wrong. But as long as you plan it all ahead, it's good. Anyway, it's a riding experience, so the best thing to do is to get on it and ride it. So I'm going to do that now, and when I finish after my snowboarding lesson on it, you know what I think then, and I'll bring it back. Sweet. Okay, then, here we are. Harley Wise Ride 2010, day three. It's a shame I haven't had any sun when I've been riding this bike around, but I must admit, I've really started enjoying it. Once you get out of that mindset of trying to go stupidly fast and trying to live everything on the limit like you do on sports bikes, it's great. One quick thing to point out, if you see the camera, a little, uh, Start in the middle there, don't leave you've got your time, your range, your odour, you've got a really good little range counter, similar to what you've got on the Triumph, which I love, and I think every bike should have, because it lets you know exactly how many miles you've got left in the tank, instead of just uh, reserve like it can be dodgy. Anyway, today we got a tan one, and I am looking forward to cruising, I just wish I had some sun, but it is so comfy and nice to ride this bike once you get used to it, once you get into the right frame of mind and you saw out the cornering and everything, it's just so nice, look at it, it's just smooth and powerful on the uptake, and as I said, nothing looks like a Harley, absolutely nothing rides or looks like a Harley, I remember when I first started reviewing Harleys, I was just the same, I, was like, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get around why people want to ride and they are beautiful bikes and they're iconic, but you know, they're not riders bikes, and I think that's a, a wrong statement, they are riders bikes, not race riders bikes, you know, you're not going to take this out because, you know, to try and work it round corners, get the most of it, but it is a beautiful bike to ride, if that makes sense. You really get to appreciate a lot of things with this bike. Instead of having your head right in the handlebars on the tank, you know, trying to do 150 or whatever, you just go along at 30, 40, feel cool, and stuff it all up. Am I having a midlife crisis? Maybe. Then again, I'll observe that cool start with maybe a bit again, so hey. Nice. And as I say, that 1596 twin they've got in here, while it won't pull like a, uh, I don't know, a Japanese twin, if you were to ride the uh, Intruder or the 1800s that they do, it would pull a lot more, you know, but this 
got more of it. I can't really have an eight. You've got a first break, you know? G'day, here we are then. I've just finished uh, my snowboarding lesson for the day and I was doing some big kickers, landed about 80% of them for once, not the other way around, crashing loads. In fact, I'm going to be on grabs next week, but enough of the mighty uh, Tamworth snow dome. Time to get back on the Harley. As you can see, it is pinging. It's absolutely shucking it down. Hence, I'm videoing uh, a little bit under cover here because I'm going to get my camera soaked. So, this will be interesting. Got me all weather rucker gear on. Loved it on the way down. It was such a beautiful bike to come in and cruise on. Made really, really good time. It was good at speed. Uh, I did do a lot of talking on the camera, so you'll uh, get a lot of that through. But I'm really falling in love with this bike, and it's great to just get on a cruise. Uh, unfortunately, to say, weather's not great, but as it's a bit of a lull up, I'm going to get back on the bike, and I'll see you in a bit. Well, I've been thinking about this as a bike to buy. Obviously, at this price range, well, 11 grand, you've got things like the Rocket 3, the R1. So many different types of bikes Ducati Monster 1100. And it all just comes down to what you like. This is an amazing machine. It's just a different type of machine to all the other stuff I normally ride, you know? You've got to get that in your head. So if you want a bike, you know, you're not bothered about doing breakneck speeds. You're not bothered about, don't get you up to a ton, ton, ton. You're not bothered about, you know, accelerating at the speed of the night and having your head ripped off every time you open the throttle. If you want a bike that's fun to ride, nice and comfy to ride. Look at her, man. So beautiful. Made it back safe and sound from the snow dome. Some of the worst conditions I've ever ridden. I didn't even try with the uh, helmet camera because purely you wouldn't have been able to see anything through the squalls, wind, rain. I couldn't have imagined, believe it or not, a better bike to ride in those conditions. Because of its weight, it was so stable, it was nice, it was really comfortable even in the rubbish. <coughs> Excuse me. The wind and rain at about 70 miles an hour. This rucker gear, by the way, unbelievable. Head to toe, obviously, with some good boots and gloves. It was actually chucking down and there's not a drop on me. And I'm going to have to move the bike now because my neighbours have turned up. I can see this in a sec. There we go. Continue then. So with the bike tucked away now safe and sound. What are my final thoughts on this really, really impressive Harley? Well, obviously, as always, it takes you uh, the right mindset. It's changed with different bikes and you start to realise what the bikes are made for. A, that's one of the most extraordinarily beautiful bikes I've ever ridden. I've just taken it round to a mate's house and about all the neighbours <laughs> and about half the street came to have a look at it and sit on it. B, when you're cruising, and this is what that bike is for with its little kind of engine, it feels great. It's comfy, it's, uh, you know, the suspension is actually not bad, especially when you're going along nice flat roads, you know, don't give a pothole. Well, that's just because those forks obviously facing at an angle, so you're taking the judder through the bike. And it's just, you know, the power's there. It's a 1596. It just, it doesn't kind of come on in a maelstrom. It's just a nice cruising power. And that's what it's there for, you know. It's not supposed to be something you're going to rag other people off the road with. It's something that you just turn up in style with. Um, I'm loving it, to be honest with you. I'm actually quite upset. I'm not going to be able to ride it because now the sun's going to come out. I can't think of anything better. I might sneak out on it before he goes back on Tuesday. But it is brilliant, you know. And if you're looking at Harleys, £11,000, it's one of the best ones I've ridden. I'm going to be testing the Fat Boy Special and a Fat Bob um, in the next few weeks as well. So it'd be nice to compare them to those. Uh, as I say, I do feel while the Japanese cruisers might be a little bit cheaper, um, might be a little bit more kind of cheaper to maintain and everything, there's nothing like a Harley. If you want that style of bike, it's brilliant. The only thing I would say that obviously bear in mind is if you're test riding Harley, test ride a Triumph Thunderbird as well because they're amazing bikes and they offer, they do offer that kind of ridiculous amount of power um, and a little bit extra, a bit more sports bike handling. But this is a brilliant machine, man. I've really, really enjoyed riding it. It's a complete change of pace from what I've been doing recently. Um, and actually, for the next couple of days, I'm getting this Suzuki Gladius, a bike that I will ride extremely differently to the uh, obviously Harley Wide Glide, but um, for my first Harley of the year, I mean, what a bike, just look at it, what a machine. It's not bad, I feel really bad because it's actually covered in mud and rain and everything now, but hey, at least it's been ridden, and I have given it a good ride, and it's been, uh, it's been a brilliant few days on it, I've really enjoyed it, um, and as I say, when you're looking at something for cruising around on, and being stylish, and turning up in style, and with a lot of interest, and something that you'll enjoy riding, that will generally put a smile on your face, and is brilliant at just doing those nice, long, leisurely cruises. Can't really beat you, Harley. So, until next time, my friends, I'm on the Gladius, I believe, tomorrow. Ride safe.